my honest review of these episodes of The Simpsons and Family Guy is I would rather be watching better things. El Nombre. <laughs> you can run with us. What's up, guys? Evanescence here, waking you up in the size. Welcome to the best and worst of The Simpsons and Family Guy 2023 edition. This time we are joined by Becky and Sam. I do just absolutely love Old Simpsons. It's far too much of my vocabulary. It's so well written and it's so funny and it's so joke dense. But I also think that there's just an element of like some nostalgia and emotion that's tied into it that makes me like it a lot more. It's dignity! Hmm. When I first started this series of you guys, I'd not seen that much. Now I've seen it a lot more consistently and a lot of the episodes are like solid gold the whole, whole way through. I guess I used to watch The Simpsons like a normal amount growing up. I don't think I've seen a lot of the new stuff at all. Like, definitely nothing in the last, like, five years. Family Guy, I think I have a much more normal relationship with. I think I used to watch it when I was a teenager. I think the writing's quite lazy. There's always a lot of scenes in Family Guy that make it seem like they needed to pad out the show. Like, they'll, they might drag something on for way too long. Are you going to show your family guy tattoo? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's Stewie's ass on my ass. <laughs> I thought it was Herbert the pervert, like just beneath your armpit. I used to be obsessed with Family Guy. When I was about 13, 14, I thought it was the best show ever. And I had seasons one through to 11 on DVD and I would just sit and watch them like literally just all day. Wouldn't go out of my way to watch it now. I don't, I don't think it's particularly interesting and I think that was definitely just a teenage phase. We watched two episodes last year and two episodes the year before and of those four episodes there was only one that we three really didn't like. We thought it was a prime example of Family Guy tedium. The other three we saw, I think we'll agree, we thought were really funny. There was moments in each scene that really made us laugh. We've been here an hour and you've hardly touched your penis. I like you. <laughs> <laughs> Compared that to The Simpsons, the four Simpsons episodes we've seen where... The stable line of kind uh, of meh. When someone tells me that they're a fan of The Simpsons, I assume that they mean old Simpsons. Because in my mind, it's kind of already ended. The way that I feel in the times that I've seen what I would call new Simpsons, but by that I mean Simpsons from literally like the last 10 years. You know when you have like a friend or family member who's like going through a really hard time or they're really unwell? And you're a bit sad afterwards because you're like, it's really hard to see them like that. That's kind of how I feel watching New Simpsons. I have that every time I spend time with Peter. <laughs> <I guess. laughs> He's so <laughs> unwell. Once I rose above the noise and confusion. Are we ready to watch a new episode of The Simpsons? It might be really good. Oh, I should have taken that suicide pill. Hey, I've seen this before. Really? I didn't even do the intro. I think after 700 episodes, you can get away with not showing the opening title sequence. Why are they all checking each other's teeth for lipstick? Classic women. Is that Morty? Oh, jeez. Bart's iconic blue hat. Didn't he have a lucky red hat? Yeah, he did. Ashley Starling is a whiny pop singer for whiny girls who love to whine. You know Olivia Rodrigo? Yeah, let's do that. Was it she a Disney person anyway? They're just taking the piss out of themselves. How long have you been a proud member of the Murmur Nation? Since never. Ashley Starling is a whiny pop singer for whiny girls that love to whine. You insulted Ashley Starling on camera. I am looking into the eyes of a dead man. This home we're about to get cancelled. No way could Homer afford an airbag. <laughs> How many times have they crashed that car? The same no, they did it last season. Low, sweet it's been totaled like at least once a season the entire show. Your car was built in Croatia. It's made from old Soviet tanks. <gasps> Lenny! You've made the nuclear power plant a very dangerous place to work. Great job, Murmur Nation. We've got Doughboy on the ropes. I feel bad for the ropes. It's in a joke. <laughs> is that uh because he's heavy and they're just oh my god i love my dad but you guys are my besties 
I love my dad, but I hate him even more. I'm pop sensation. Robert Downey Jr. Oh, careful. Springy, the Springfield yeah, Spring. I was about to say. You're not flushing those glitter bombs down the toilet, are you? 999 glitter bombs to flush down. Marge hasn't been in the episode yet. She tripped and fell on her own shears. Am I the only one around here who cares about the rules? <laughs> Market Zero! I honestly have no idea what the fuck's going on right now. Ashley isn't just a singer we like. She's the tattoo I've been designing for when I turn 18. Is it dignity? This seems a bit out of character for Lisa to care this much about a celebrity, yeah. a pop star. She's never been the same since she went Gaga. There's an episode where she becomes obsessed with Corey, and there are episodes where she tries to fit in. You're out of the group. What? Yeah, Mackenzie said you weren't excited enough to meet her dog. But, but, who names their dog Greg? That's a man name. Here comes Greg. Craig, I could understand, but Greg? I have been a very dedicated fan since I was four. How can a four-year-old be a dedicated fan? I was a very dedicated fan to shitting myself. Lisa, but you're the one kid I had on purpose. No, he didn't have any of them on purpose. Yeah. You're pregnant again? When my dermatologist wouldn't fly to Japan to remove a culturally insensitive mole, I hit him with my culturally insensitive mole. Dad's never stayed mad this long. Maybe we should run the can opener. He always comes when he hears that. <laughs> this episode got a laugh out of me. I can't believe it. Uh. Oh no, the cat at Barney. How are they in the music video? That was the guy who's also named Boz. Oh boy, let's just throw in an old episode and not change the aspect ratio. It's secretly a clip show. They're reminding us of when they used to make jokes. Oh, we watched that one together. Eberscreen Terrence needs our help. We can get plastered and hit on our <laughs> So was that the lowest rated or the highest rated? Lowest. That had the most negative reviews on IMDb. I believe oh, oh, it's still going. It's crazy that I believed in someone so much that I got swallowed up in groupthink. I know. So scary. Oh my god, we're late for church! I'll get nice crisp dollars for the donation basket! There was, there was a joke. Yeah, there was a joke. We found the joke. I felt like I laughed a few times in the episodes. The plot itself was... Kind of dull and derivative. Didn't even feel like they wrapped up the plot. Yeah, it kind of just ended because just the two ended. kids were like, we're just done with it now. It was super cringe. It kind of just felt like they were jumping from one thing to the other, but it didn't really feel like a coherent story. Who are they putting in the old clips from The Simpsons for? They're probably um, trying to appeal to the older fans, but it's pointless because the older fans have already stopped watching. Yeah, and yeah. it just reminds you of like, oh, our, that was a better episode. Yeah, was good I could be watch watching that instead. I, it kind of feels like it was shoehorned into the episode just to, <laughs> they need to, you know, reconcile as a family or whatever. I think shoehorned is a very nice way of saying it. They're kind of mm -hmm. like, just like crammed in. <laughs> We've got some of these old clips laying about, let's fucking use them. The hot take from your video mm. will be Simpsons getting worse. Yeah. <laughs> we need more Lenny. The jokes are such a different style. They're like one liners now and not. Uh, to, be, to be honest, so, I, I didn't see any jokes. Well, there once were two cowboys all alone out on the trail. What season is um, Simpsons on now? 34. And this is like season 21 of Family Guy, yeah. I think? Yeah. Sad yeah. noises. The mayor of Cohog, Cohog being the town of Family Guy, mm. was voiced by actor Adam West. Adam West passed away five years ago or so now. They brought in a new Mayor West, who was voiced by the actor Sam Elliott. He was the narrator in The Big Lebowski. The dude abides. The oh, other the other Ron! Yeah. He's the one who's like, I'm vegan, and Ron's like, I no longer like Ron. What is on your foot, sir? The man's feet should remain uncaged. The Father's Day scavenger hunt I organized with the other wives. No! 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 That was Al Pacino, wasn't it? 
That's that's House of Gucci. What? Yeah. That's such a weird thing to just reference. They should have cut to the clip of him going, Great ass! One of the voice actors from The Simpsons is in that scene. Ah, King of the Hill. This is very hard. Should have had it where Joe was upside down, pedaling with his hands. Happy Father's Day, Daddy! A bunch of grabby fellas at the mall thought he was Lizzo. We get it. Wow. Quagmire's not a dad, is he? No. Well, he is, but like... To many kids. <laughs> I didn't know you had a podcast. Well, you have to ask questions to get answers, Peter. You should see Joe's OnlyFans. It's really horrible. Hey! Aren't you Kronk from The Emperor's New Groove? It's a great film. I rewatched that the other day. Wow. Yeah, it's fucking... It's so good. It's incredible. So every year, Wild West waits right there for his father to show. But every year, his father never does. His mouth is very wet. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I don't know why they got me. His, his mouth is very wet. I can see that on a t-shirt. <laughs> I'm looking for a new paper shredder. I can never find one that lasts. Any recommendations? I like your style, dude. Hello, son. Is that the granddad from Willy Wonka? I'll never walk again. What's that? Free chocolate? Let's go. Don't let the door hit you in the ass on the way out. Do people get hit in the ass with it a lot? It's just an expression. Oh. I'm kind of worried about this door now, though. Just leave. <laughs> oh, God, I lost. <laughs> I could give you a lift, but I'm afraid we're going to have to leave your mangled man behind. We'll tell your wife you love her. No, that's okay. <laughs> Ma'am? Ma'am? Ma- M? Padding! Quick, get the shovel. Scoop in more filler. Now you look like a man who's ready to be a dad. In fact, my son was having a problem. <sighs> Sometimes there's a man... Sometimes, there's a man. When Mayor West sees you now, he's gonna know you're serious about being his dad. Was that it? Was that all the training? I thought the episode was gonna be about training him. <laughs> Exchange today! I reckon you know I always come in like a wrecking ball. Is that Miley? I reckon it is. Topical. We really messed up, like David Geffen. What the hell was that? Yeah, David Geffen paid us $10 million not to do the cutaway. Who the fuck is David Geffen? Is he related to Conway Twitty? You've got to let it go, Peter. I can't do that. Old West and I were partners. For all of 15 minutes. Hey, hey, it was much less than that. <laughs> Where's your horse? <laughs> it's very hard to get a horse last minute. Happy Father's Day. If you shot him in his febrile artery, he will die in minutes. You're pretty lucky to have a stepdad like Alan. Yeah. Aside from not believing in vaccines, he's a pretty cool guy. Oh, boy. Uh. Okie dokie. I laughed at some of the stupid jokes. Probably five out of ten or something like that. This one I think is kind of in between, where it overall definitely wasn't good, but I can say I've definitely seen much worse episodes. Because usually when Family Guy's bad, it's irritatingly bad. I didn't feel like the story was really anything to write home about. I did think there were, there were definitely moments where I laughed. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I, I feel like I chuckled at it. It had some silly jokes, definitely no clever jokes. There were jokes in there that made me laugh, um, which wasn't true for The Simpsons. Some Family Guy episodes really just drag things out or try to be as gross as possible or try to get you on shock value. But there were actually a few jokes in that which were mainly just funny because of how abstract they were. A lot of the references were very outdated. Yeah. Um, referencing Wrecking Ball. When did that come out? They could have picked they a more modern Miley Cyrus song. To be fair, maybe that's just because oh, right. we're now of a generation when we would see things referenced in The Simpsons in the 90s or 2000s, they'd be referencing stuff from the 70s and the 60s. But now, mm -hmm. perhaps because we're in this generation where we are we actually know specifically what they are referencing, yeah. we've gone through that, mm -hmm. so now it stands out more to us of, why are you playing that song now? That's not topical. I think it we can all agree it beat the shit out of The Simpsons. 
Have they not run out of horror to parody? Well, the thing is, they keep making films and TV shows for them to pastiche. I guess. I guess they could do Midsummer and Hereditary mm-hmm. and The Lighthouse. This is only the 33rd time okay. they've done a Treehouse of Horror episode, because they only do them once a year. What should we read tonight? The Puka Duck. What do you people do all day? The Puka Duck. Sup, Moon? The Puka Duke? Wait, how many Puka Dukes do we have? Welcome to Puka Duke Apocalypse. The only thing scary about this is the voice. How does he get in, this mean Puka Duke? Why you let him in? By reading this book. <gasps> no Sforatu. Marge, the chicken and I would like to be alone for a moment. You aren't still scared of that silly Puka Duke, are you? <laughs> Famously, Maggie is a good shot. When Pookie gets a hold of you, you'll change for the worse. I've been watching too much Community because my brain creates about to change. Ha! Yay! Time to put the baby down. Is this going to be like um, Home Sweet Home Alone? It won't be very good. Marge is going to get a tattoo that says "The Maggie The." <laughs> <laughs> Who took these photos? Mulman. Got you! <gasps> oh, Maggie! I'm so sorry I got possessed and almost chopped you up into little pieces. The only thing stopping Marge from being a serial killer is the occasional touch of her face where I'm a baby. That's nice. Change the fucking record. What the fuck? <laughs> Gender revealed Napal? Neon Dennis Simpson Sangalian. Yugi Do. We better fucking phone them up right now. Matt Groening is groaning at me. This is really weird. Why is Marge not wearing green? She is. She is. The front apron yeah, is green. Pink. I am a Shinigami, a god of death. Oh, hey, Mo. I was thinking Krusty. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Krusty crossed with Mo. You ever read or, or seen Death Note? No. This is a shockingly accurate representation. After my side, Corporation Global War melts the polar ice cap. But millions of people will drown! True, but I'll be able to dock my yacht outside my kitchen. (laughs) The most peaceful way to go. (laughs) Fucking hell. Flushed the gator down the toilet, but it got stuck halfway, and now we have to feed it. Don't just stand there, do something! (laughs) My bollocks have exploded! How did you figure out how I killed all those people? I found out about your stupid book by reading an even stupider book Your Diary. So this is a big part of the actual series Death Note, where the character Light can't kill Elle because they don't know Elle's name. Except she already wrote in Jill Bird. It's not his real name. I'm free! I... Ah! Damn it! I've become a crusty juggler. Murder, murder, murder. Oh my what the God. fuck? Is this going to be a it's thing biting. about it? Is it about biting? <laughs> Marge versus the monorail is experiencing technical difficulties. Wait, what? Don't ruin one of the best episodes. Are they doing a Westworld? Oh, that's kind of a cool idea. It's Big Butt Skinner. Stampy. Oh my god, it's Hank Scorpio. He's fucking back. The gargoyles, they do nothing. <laughs> We're replicants in a ridiculous theme park for an ancient TV show. Again, it's like a lot of these references are really old references. Most of these are from the first several years of the show. Should we wake up a grandpa robot? No time! Okay. <laughs> I'll take a crab juice. Like... Oh my god. <laughs> it's actually not a bad episode. But it's only good yeah. because we enjoy the references to Simpsons that we thought was really good. I think this is a very cool way to do the references. Yeah. Canyonero. Is it Bob's Burgers? 
Oh, yeah. Oh, my fucking fucking God, it is, isn't it? The cheese got left out, so it's a little sweaty, but you never know. Forget I said anything. Take your time. Take your time. Where's the fairly your parents land? I need when the boat comes in, world. (laughs) (laughs) Where's the dad's army universe? (laughs) Which I mean, the Second World War. (laughs) I like the second and third ones there. The first one was a bit like, they're just doing a Babadook and not really making any fun of it. The second one was not necessarily interesting from a story point of view, but it was interesting to see the story be retold in a definite style. The third one I found a lot more interesting. I know a lot of it was just pandering to references. I think Mm -hmm. it's nice to see them doing something different, which is how I felt with those second two episodes. But they didn't even really try to put many jokes into that. The Treehouse of Horror episodes generally are some of the more entertaining Mm -hmm. episodes because they can do whatever. They can have whatever happens in five to ten minute segments, so that gives them more scope. Some people who run Simpson fan accounts on Twitter, I've seen a few of them say, oh, you can't call yourself a Simpson fan if you're saying only the first ten years of the show are really any good. In their opinion, you should still be a dedicated viewer of the show. Both people are wrong. Yeah, it sounds like what they have is Stockholm Syndrome. (laughs) It's a wonderful day for pie. Great, and if you folks need anything else, I'll be invisible. Wait, didn't you make a joke and someone made a joke about that? Yeah, It was was something we were watching earlier. Yeah. You've seen a ghost. Yeah, I saw a ghost. There's a restaurant in New York called The Tavern on the Green. Sure. And there is a ghost there, and it's he's a guy, he's a waiter. And he comes up, tells you what the special is, and then takes your order, and then he disappears. <laughs> hey, what the hell's going on out here? Don't you know who I am? I'm Brian Griffin. I died once. I'm having these guys put up a treehouse. Two treehouse episodes in a row. Let's just say Peter doesn't always... He doesn't always go to Australia. You know, the... Laying down under. I'm sorry, the six year old birthday party has asked if you could keep your voices down. If they're only six, they shouldn't be understanding what we're talking about. Sorry, we've got double entendre disease. Photo booth with props if anyone's feeling sassy. Eh? Um, yes. What the hell? was that <laughs> so we're on the same page i couldn't hear a word over those floorboards creaking oh my god creek city and like nothing to eat like dude go to costco grab some of those frozen quiches it's not like he didn't know we were coming so guys which storyline are you most invested in the one about uh pizza satisfying lois in the bedroom or the one where stewie has a tree house and people are vaguely bitchy but not that much and this is the best episode supposedly Whenever you hear the trigger phrase, you just imagine yourself sitting on a beach, eating an ice cream cone. I'm triggered! <laughs> this is what you do. You trick cartoon characters into getting your oral sex. I had to um, convince Elmer Fudd to give Bugs Bunny a hand job the other day. <laughs> <laughs> You're a very handsome wabbit. <laughs> <laughs> that is not consensual. Yeti! I like the idea that it just is a different game every time. Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 3. <laughs> Gotta be Crow Runner 2.0. <laughs> Robot Wars, Arenas of Destruction. <laughs> He'll be destructing her arena. So one story is about passive-aggressive friendships and the other one is about non-consexual sex. <laughs> Hooray! You know what's horrifying to think about? They've mentioned how they're going to dinner at Lois's parents' house later on. And the storyline there is about oral sex. Oh, no. I wouldn't bring Eric within a hundred yards of that place. Eric would be miserable up there. Please don't tell anybody how Stewie lives. <laughs> You mind making a plate and bringing it up for mommy? Yeah, I can do that. Oh dear. This can only go badly. It was foreshadowed by parent sex. Oh yeah. Mom, what's for breakfast? Shut up, you little turd! Parent sex. When your mom yells at you through a closed door, that's why. Uh... Oh god. <sighs> oh boy, creamy. 
Your mother. Oh. <laughs> Where's my money? You gonna give me my money? Where's my money, man? Like, open the door. Stewie closed the door behind them. Why, why is it open now? Wait! Did... Did... Did you make that? What? Of course I did. Why? It's just... I, I just don't know how you're able to make such cool weapons at your age. Uh, wow, that is really well made. Hey, Stewie. Sorry, I couldn't find a shirt or a bra, so I figured I'd just let him flop around the hallway. <laughs> All right. Mom, shoot okay. him shot himself. Oh, he shot himself. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Jesus Christ, you know. Ah, uh, well, <laughs> IMDB isn't oh. always correct. Oh my God. That's the top rated one. That's with the amount of people saying I like this episode versus the amount of people saying I didn't like it. I thought the B plot was boring and didn't really have any laughs and, and the A plot for me was I guess kind of amusing but more like fucking hell rather than like yeah. this is really funny and I appreciate that's probably what they were going for so I didn't know that that moment was coming Ua, because when the episode aired it got Family Guy trending with people saying this most tasteless thing Family Guy I've ever done which of course led to really multiple fun. people saying Oh, not really. Remember the time they did this and the time they did that. Yeah, that did was. My first serve hit a plane, causing it to go tragically off course and hit a building. Everyone blamed the Muslims. I mean, it was that thing no, where my family guy's hard to watch. Predictable and slow, really. Yeah, it was not easy to watch, for sure. I much preferred the other one. I much preferred the lowest rated one, because there were actually jokes in that that we loved. That was that. fine. I was like... It wasn't amazing, but it was, like, watchable. We can petition IMDb to swap over the scores. Uh, Family Guy, once again, marginally wins out. By being funny. Yeah, in terms of the comedy. The Chaos of Fall wasn't really that funny. It was just entertaining. If I had to rate them, Family Guy is like a 6.5, and... No, that's too high. The last time I think Family Guy took it quite easily. Oh, definitely. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The last time we did this, both the Family Guy episodes were really funny. I think if you had a gun to my head and said I had to watch a whole season of Family Guy or The Simpsons, I'd, I'd just let you shoot me. I mean, in conclusion, there were no winners and we're all the losers. Because the visions are flea creeping. 22 minutes of my life gone. Oh, I don't need waiting anyway. <laughs> Just eat it, just eat it.